Awesome. Thanks, everybody. We are back, and now we're going to talk about one of my favorite services. Uh, actually, one of the nicest teams to work with, so I wanted to thank you guys for that. Thank you. Uh, so I'm with the Kinesis team, and I'll let you guys introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about what Kinesis is, and then I think we'll probably have some questions from the stream, and I've also got some questions for you. Great. I'm Roger Barger. I'm General Manager for Amazon Kinesis Services. My name is Kapil Chhabra, and I'm a Senior Product Manager for Kinesis Services. Awesome. So what you know, Roger, could you kind of walk us through what Kinesis is at a, at a high level and then you know, maybe, maybe dive deep and give us some cool details? Absolutely. Um, first, it's kind of interesting to stop just for a moment and think that most data in the world is continuously generated. And the value of that data can actually diminish rapidly over time. So it's in our customer's best interest to try to be able to extract meaningful value and insights that are perishable out of that data as fast as they can. And Kinesis is a family of services, it consists of four services today, that allow our customers to collect their streaming data, capture it, process it, and load it into de other destinations. Um, I'll say a little bit about, about our services. We have four today. Kinesis Data Streams allows our customers to capture massive amounts of streaming data coming off of devices, off of applications and servers, so they can then process it with maybe EC2 and use our Kinesis client library. They can process it with Lambda, and we have connectors to other partner services to allow them to process their data. Kinesis Firehose can actually read from a Kinesis stream or it has its own API in which you can put your streaming data and then you simply choose a destination in which you want that data to appear. And within minutes it will actually, like your streaming data will appear in these destinations and be continuously loaded. And you can actually use Lambda to transfer the data as it's streaming. So you can clean it, format it prior to putting it into a destination. Our third service is Kinesis Data Analytics. And it allows you to connect to a Kinesis data stream or a Kinesis data firehose and process your data in real time using SQL. And it's completely serverless, so it auto scales as your incoming stream scales. And then finally, fourth, and you're going to hear a little bit more about it later from my colleague Audi, is Kinesis Video Streams, which allows you to capture video and process video data in real time. Wow, really, really cool. <laughs> so, Kinesis has this concept of shards at its core, yes. and that's kind of, when you're talking about a Kinesis stream, that's like your fundamental unit of scale. Uh, yes. And, and what, what exactly does a, a single shard give you? you know, how, how does that work? Like, how do I get data in there? Do I use an SDK, or are, are there other tools? Absolutely. There, we have agents to put data into a Kinesis stream. We have a put API, and we also have libraries that will actually allow you to efficiently compact your data and compress it before putting it into a Kinesis stream. And you're right, a shard is the unit of resource that you allocate. And a shard will actually give you 1,000 transactions per second of ingress, 2,000 transactions per second egress, one megabyte per second total coming in. And what's cool about it is that when you put data into a Kinesis stream, you give it a partition key and that partition key will route it to the same shard. So even though you may have devices around the world that are putting data into Kinesis, if they use that same partition key, that data can be collected and, and processed in that same shard. So it's a map reduce like architecture under the covers. That's really powerful. And that then there is. are also sequence numbers too, so you can go, you know, I, I want to read from you know, Trim Horizon or I want to read from Latest and things like that. So when I, when I have a Lambda function, for instance, I can say, hey, let me, let me grab all of this uh, from the last time I saw it, or mm -hmm. let me grab all of this starting from this sequence. Yes, and we even, we even last year added the ability for a customer to select a point in time in their stream and read forward from that as well. So, so cool. uh, the cool processing that you can do with that, it's very flexible in how you can process data in your stream. So, uh, what are customers using Kinesis for, typically? Uh, you know, we actually have customers in every market segment where data is being continuously generated. So this, this could be a while, but I'll just pick a few examples. Sonos, who actually makes a beautiful Bluetooth radio, uses Kinesis streams to capture data about the applications that are running on their Sonos devices, about how the hardware is performing, about content that's being used so they can better serve their customers. So that's a good example for Kinesis streams. Kinesis Firehose, we have a partner that we recently announced, Splunk. And Splunk customers are trying to get real-time insight out of their data using Splunk, and Firehose will deliver data from the customer's data collection points 
into their Splunk cluster for them automatically. So customers don't have to think about a stream or manage shards. Firehose takes all of that for them. That Splunk integration is awesome. That, it really is. It's been a great, <laughs> a great partnership and it's an exciting way to see how their customers are getting insights out of their data using Firehose for ingest. One, and, of, my, one of my favorite things about Splunk too is that you, you write these basic Django front ends where you can go and you can have anything visualized however you want. So, uh -huh. it, you know, Kibana has its own kind of really cool front end for visualizing things, but uh, I, I'm a Python guy, so it's way easier for me to write the <laughs> stuff in Django. Um, yeah. So we, we have kind of a bunch of core components here. We have Firehose, we have streams, we have analytics, and we have video. Yes. So one of the ones that I really want to dive deep on today is analytics, because oh. we launched a number of features for analytics over the past few weeks. Yes. Um, and typically those are, those are machine learning features that you can run on streaming data, yep. which is kind of a crazy concept, right? <laughs> if you think about uh, you know, typical machine learning, think about something like k-means clustering. You typically have to have the whole data set available to you before you can actually perform any of these inferences. But what we've designed with Kinesis An Analytics, or I should say what you guys have designed with Kinesis mm -hmm. Analytics, is this ability to, to make these inferences on streaming data. And could you dive a little deep on that and, and tell us more about it? Yeah, absolutely. So with Kinesis Analytics, the way the service works is you use the Kinesis data stream or a Kinesis data firehose and put it into the Kinesis Analytics application. It's pretty straightforward from there. You write the standard SQL code to do analytics on the real-time data sources coming through data streams or data firehose. And then you get the data out, uh, analytics output from that analytics application. You can use the output in another Kinesis data stream or invoke a Lambda function from it or write it to a destination using Firehose. You can send it to Splunk as well, uh, as we were just talking about. Or Elasticsearch. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So what we've done in this standard SQL is that we've extended that functionality of SQL even further to include machine learning functionality there. And we have algorithms for doing real-time anomaly detection and hotspot detection, a few more that we can talk about now. Uh, to run in real time uh, on streams of data with zero labeled data. And so this, these are all unsupervised algorithms, meaning you don't have to provide any sort of annotation to, to give the algorithm the, the labeled data that it needs to make its inferences. It can take the existing schema, infer schema from the data, and then infer meaning from that schema uh, and the data in that schema, which is just really, really cool. You know, there are underlying algorithms that, that, that have been talking about streaming data for a long time. Like there, there's DB scan and, and, and uh, uh, you know other kind of cool concepts like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I've never really seen it in production before. I mean, I had the chance to play with this just the other day, and I basically took a bunch of taxi data uh, from the New York Limousine and Taxi Commission, uh, and this is a real popular public data set. It has latitude and longitude, and I was able to take the pickoff and drop-off time, and I was able to identify hotspots. And I just took that entire file, streamed it into Kinesis with, with my Python SDK. Uh, and you know, there, there are other SDKs, there's not just the Python SDK, there's the Kinesis producer library and the Kinesis consumer library that are both very powerful. But in this case, I like Python, so I use Python. And I, I put all this data in, and then I just ran Hotspot, and it's literally like, all, all I do is I just say, select all from Hotspot, open parens, put in the labels I want, and it gives me my hotspots, and it gives yep. me the bounding boxes, yep. it gives me the density, it gives me all this like really useful information. This is it's like having superpowers. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a connected tar company uh, that's experimenting with that same hotspot detection thing right now. What they're trying to do is they're using connected cars that go into certain areas of the geography where uh, the lidar could potentially get weak signal because of uh, lack of visibility. This could be because of heavy rain or dust storm or something. And they can use hotspots that are generated by that lack of visibility and inform other, other connected cars driving in that same direction uh, to maybe engage uh, off of the autonomous mode and go into the manual mode of driving. Way cool, way yeah. cool. So what are customers, you know, you, you mentioned one customer now uh, with this autonomous driving capability, but, but what are some of the other cool use cases you've seen customers doing with, with this kind of ML and streaming data? Oh, lots of use cases. Uh, we have external customers and internally Amazon as well been using uh, some of these functionality that we've been launching. Uh, so one of the things that I can talk about is uh, a healthcare partner uh, that we have uh, uh, with Kinesis. What they're doing is they're putting uh, a lot of operational data uh, from their infrastructure into Kinesis and they're running anomaly detection on top of it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, they identify if there's any operational issue in the uh, instances that they manage for their customers. And at the same time, if there is anything that they identify, they use the functionality that we have with anomaly detection uh, with explanation to identify where the actual problem is and start to do root cause analysis in real time. So, uh, you know, uh, I guess a, a common point of confusion might be, do, do I need to be a machine learning expert to take advantage of this? Uh, do I need to be a data scientist to like use this? No. no. This, is, this is one of the areas where we looked at our customers and what they were interested in doing and what they, were, what they wanted to do, and they really just wanted insights out of the data. So we actually took this problem back to our science team, and they invented and simplified on behalf of the customer. They simply have to turn the algorithm on and the, the algorithm itself will actually automatically do machine learning, continuous machine learning. We've even extended it recently so it'll actually explain exactly, for example, when it finds an anomaly, what was causing the anomaly, what, what was the, attribu the attributes in the data that caused it, and how are they changing? Because so, again, our customers merely want insights. They don't want to do data science or machine learning. And, and I, you know, I, I have a little bit of a math background and a physics background, so I'm, I'm typically pretty comfortable with the data science side, mm. uh, but I way prefer just calling an API than like having to remember what P values and Z values and all these things are. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool to be able to do that. So I, I guess kind of the, to, to close it up, you know, how do customers get started with this? Is it, do they have to be previewed or whitelisted or anything? Or is, how does it work? It's all available right now. So in prod? Yes, in prod. Awesome. All uh, you guys need to do is go to aws.amazon.com slash kinesis slash analytics. And you'll have all the information that you need to get started right there. There are blog posts, there is uh, enough documentation and SQL template sample code that you can use to simply get started really quickly. I'm definitely going to be playing around with this a little bit more. Uh, at, at Amazon, we, we have this concept of leadership principles, uh, and one of the ones that you mentioned is invent and simplify, and these are public. You can go and look them up. You can go to amazon.com slash leadership dash principles. Uh, and I want to say, you know, I've worked with a lot of different teams at Amazon, and uh, you guys are kind of like playing leadership principle bingo here. You're getting every single one. So uh, I just wanted to say thanks so much for working Absolutely. so hard on behalf of our customers. Absolutely. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you guys much. for coming on. Have a good night.